Are mini PCs the future? In our turbulent times, people are increasingly asking themselves questions about power and efficiency more and more. This topic is therefore likely to become more relevant even for PCs in the near future. While desktop PCs feel like they're getting more massive and bigger every year, additionally consume more and more power, the market for mini PCs has only grown further in recent months. More consumers than ever before seem to be interested in those really compact desktop PCs, if you want to call them like that. It is not just the overall compactness that attracts those consumers, but also the amount of power and efficiency available in such a small package. For instance, today we're looking at a device featuring a 10-core CPU and 32GB of RAM. It is therefore no longer a secret that some people now even use such devices professionally. With the right model you can use such a machine for image and video editing and if you're lucky even for gaming. Today I'm putting the Geeka Mini IT13 to the test. This is the version with the Intel Core i7, 13620H CPU, 32GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. In today's video I will not only be doing performance tests with the Mini IT13 in programs and games, but I'll also be measuring the power consumption, temperatures and noise levels while performing all those mentioned tasks. Furthermore, I will point out an important detail to get the best possible performance out of this particular device if you ever decide to pick one up. You can currently get the Mini IT13 with the hardware I mentioned at a price of around 600 US dollars on Amazon and 749 euros at Geek Maxi over here in Europe. However, you can save another 112 euros using the coupon code you'll find in the video description. The price of the device then effectively drops below 640 euros. As far as what comes included, a lot. Included of course the mini PC, power cord and power supply with an output power of 120 watts, an HDMI cable, a VESA mounting bracket with screws and the usual paper documentation. First of all I would like to note how compact and small this mini PC actually is. Despite the hardware looking big and impressive on paper, the dimensions are only 117 by 112 by 49 millimeters. That is in fact so small that you could easily attach the device behind a monitor using the VESA mounting. Aesthetically, the Mini IT13 makes a very good impression on me and is slightly bluish in color, kinda matching the fact we have an Intel platform inside there. I also didn't miss the fact that the Geekcom A5 based on AMD Ryzen has the exact same look just in a different color. The build quality seems to be quite good. Although the exterior is made out of plastic, the interior is stabilized by a strong metal frame. At the core of the Mini IT13, at least in my version today, is an Intel i7-13620H processor based on Raptor Lake H released in Q1 2023. In addition, Geekcom equips the platform with 32GB of RAM but of the DDR4 type and not DDR5. At least we are running in the dual channel at 3200 MHz. For the price mentioned, you can of course expect at least 1TB of SSD storage. There is an M.2 NVMe drive installed in here based on PCIe 4.0 x4 actually. However, I am not familiar with the brand or manufacturer going by the name of Wotposit. At least this thing delivers performance, so we can expect fairly high read and write speeds. If you loosen 4 screws on the bottom of the device and then pull the bottom part off, the interior is revealed allowing us to make a few upgrades and expansions. They are obviously trying to cool the NVMe SSD using a thermal pad. Anyway, we are being offered great access to perform upgrades, be it RAM or SSDs. In fact, there is another M.2 slot on board, but it is of the shorter kind. I think it's fantastic that we can even install a regular 2.5 inch drive in here. That's the type of expansion options I'd like to see and expect from more brands out there. Well done Geekcom. The Mini IT13 breathes through those ventilation holes on the left and right, as well as through those cutout holes on the back. Now let's talk ports. At the front, right beside the power button, there is a 3.5mm audio port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, 
as well as another one right next to it that is even PD, power delivery rated, so it's designed to be able to provide lots of power. On the rear of the device, there's a real feast going on in terms of connectivity. Namely, two USB 4 based on Type-C, basically Thunderbolt 4 with a bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second and DisplayPort capability, two HDMI 2.0, one USB 3.2 Gen 2, one USB 2.0 and finally a 2.5 gigabit LAN port. There is also an SD card reader on the left and a Kensington lock on the right. To come back to the video outputs, it's possible for us to connect up to four monitors at the same time. A maximum of 4K 60Hz via HDMI is possible, whereas over USB 4 that would be even 8K but at a measly 30Hz. Nonetheless, it's quite impressive when considering it's only Intel's integrated graphics unit taking care of the job. The Mini IT13 also features some other innovations, one being Wi-Fi 6E, the brand new standard with the 6GHz band. Bluetooth 5.2 of course also being at our disposal. Windows 11 Pro comes already pre-installed. When you start up the device for the very first time, you can also choose from a bunch of different languages. Out of the box the Windows version 22H2 is installed, so there's definitely some catching up to do with updates right away. Geekam activated Windows using a digital license, and after a quick check it turns out it's an OEM license. So far so good. There don't seem to be any third-party programs pre-installed out of the box, so no sign of any bloatware here. There also don't seem to be any questionable tools or services running in the background, and none start up with Windows. Microsoft Edge is the only web browser that comes pre-installed with Windows. No extensions or anything similar appear to have been snuck in by Geekum. In the past, and sadly even to this day, there are unfortunately still cases in which devices by certain brands and manufacturers come preloaded with malware. That's why I go through the extra work and effort and now thoroughly comb through such devices for malware and generally speaking malicious software before reinstalling the OS. Neither did Windows Defender slash Windows Security nor Norton detect any malware or threats. The Mini IT13 actually seems to be clean and safe. However, since Intel's integrated graphics, usually out of the box, are only allowed to use very little video memory that is allocated from the system memory, naturally I did not want to skip scooping around the UEFI BIOS. I was then quite disappointed when I had to discover how little customization is offered us here. Either Geekam is completely locking us out here, or it is by design that Intel's Raptor Lake H platform only allows the user to make small, minor adjustments within the UEFI BIOS. I find that to be a real bummer. However, further down below, I couldn't help but notice there's a setting that allows us to choose a fan profile. This is set to normal mode by default. For today's test, I will try both normal mode and performance, and will then compare both, because this is one way to get more performance out of this mini PC. Let's start off with a simple reading of the CPU clock speeds. In normal mode, we initially read out a clock speed of 2.9 to 3.8 GHz. After just a few seconds have passed, the CPU already has to be throttled to keep the temperatures in check, it's basically overheating. Suddenly we're looking at only 2.0 to 2.6 GHz. If we now go ahead and switch into performance mode within the UEFI BIOS, we again initially report 3.1 to 4.2 GHz and after just a few seconds only 2.4 to 3.1 GHz. A significant increase in clock speeds just by setting the fan profile from normal to performance mode. This is also because the CPU in normal mode operates with a package power of 60 to 64 watts, whereas in performance mode it runs with 60 to 73 watts at max. For a short while, as long as the temperatures allow for it, this of course results in higher performance. That difference in performance is definitely measurable in Cinebench 2024. Thanks to the i7-13620H CPU, the Mini IT13 does perform fairly well and even makes it onto the list of the more powerful models out there. Yet I still find it somewhat funny that a mini PC equipped with an i5-13500H performs even a bit better. But let's not actually forget that an i5-13500H comes equipped with 12 cores and 16 threads, 
while the i7-13620H only comes with 10 cores and 16 threads. These are some rather strange lineup decisions by Intel for sure. Nonetheless, today's Mini IT13 is undoubtedly really fast, almost too overpowered, overkill for regular office work. Watching 4K UHD videos and movies is not even worth mentioning, it plows right through it. The i7-13620H also handles light to medium image and video editing pretty well. The only aspect where such an Intel-based mini PC breaks a sweat is gaming. The integrated graphics simply just can't handle it. With medium to bigger compromises, you can still play less demanding AAA games that date a few years back, but there's not exactly a lot of fun waiting to be had, honestly. So if you're thinking of using the Mini IT13 for gaming, you should quickly forget about it. It would be a whole lot wiser to just grab a similar mini PC that is more suitable for gaming. For instance, the Geekcom A5 with AMD Ryzen featuring integrated Radeon graphics. You usually save a lot of money and generally get the better overall package if gaming is your focus. In terms of raw CPU performance, however, the Mini IT13 even with the i7-13620H does really, really well. As a matter of fact, those integrated Intel graphics also have their perks in productive use cases thanks to QSV or QuickSync video. What about the measured power consumption, temperatures and noise levels? Starting off in the default normal mode. When idling or under light loads, the power draw is incredibly low. Usually we stay right below 20 watts. At maximum load we are only slightly above 50 watts. The temperatures are of course not super low. That i7 CPU sure can be considered toasty and the cooling solution isn't that powerful. Nonetheless, the temperatures remain in a safe green zone on average. The device never really was annoying or noisy at a noise level of 39 to 41 decibels. Things look different once we switch into performance mode. The max noise level now is 49 decibels, which is clearly audible but still okay to me. Due to the higher package power the CPU is allowed in this mode, the maximum temperatures also tend to rise. Still, we are staying below the 90 degrees Celsius mark, since the CPU automatically quickly throttles anyway. The power consumption now climbs to a maximum of 67 watts or more so, settles at that value. For a short period of time, with a full boost still in play and no thermal throttling, we see around 110 watts. Either way, there are worlds in between the power efficiency of a mini PC of this type compared to a desktop PC. And even this desktop PC I'm comparing with is on the more power efficient side of things actually. Conclusion. To me it's clear that mini PCs will have a future. They are becoming more and more powerful. Years ago many people thought you'd only be able to perform mundane office work with them, but in 2024 that is not the case anymore. I am very impressed by mini PCs, including today's Geekcom Mini IT13. I'm always fascinated by how much power and efficiency these things offer. However, you should make up your mind fairly early on regarding the aspects you are going to use such device for before buying. There are big differences in price and performance, even between Intel and AMD based devices. You should avoid making the mistake by just looking at the CPU model alone, because such mini PCs usually make use of their respective CPUs integrated graphic solutions. And that's where there are huge differences to be noted. As far as integrated graphics are concerned, it's usually more advisable to go with AMD, at least for all those of you who value graphics performance. Despite the steep price, the Geekcom Mini IT13 is still very much worth recommending for me. The connectivity, especially including USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, is remarkably good. Do you like the Intel i7-13620H CPU? Are 10 cores and 16 threads really sufficient in this performance tier? And what are your thoughts on this particular Geekcom Mini IT13? What's the best part of it and what do you personally consider a downside about it? If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and if you didn't enjoy it, simply hit the dislike button. With that in mind, thank you all for watching and until the next one.